Jeremy, welcome to another FiTech Tech Tuesday. Today we're going to go over the install checklist on this beautiful 63 Corvette with a 30,003 fuel injection system. So after installing and getting the engine running with a throttle body, we got to set timing check fuel pressure, adjust the idle screw for the IAC steps, and then we're gonna go through and dyno tune it a little bit just to make sure everything's good to go. Some of the tools that you might need for uh, doing an install would be a timing light. I like a dial back one. A Phillips screwdriver for setting the idle screw. We have a fuel pressure gauge installed already. Um, a distributor wrench. And if there's things going wrong like misfires, a, a little thermal gun helps a lot. With the 30,003, there's no timing control, so we have to use the distributor to do all the ignition timing. With a small block Chevy, I typically run total timing around 32 degrees for a street engine, and uh, it kind of depends on the compression ratio and fuel you want to run and the camshaft. But 32 degrees total is without any vacuum advance connected, and it's at, revved up to maybe 3,000 RPM. We'll talk a little bit more about ignition timing in another video. But the basic idea is to set your total timing to something safe. Total, I mean full throttle, no, no vacuum advance. And then you can uh, reconnect everything after you're done setting that. And let the idle be where it is, let the vacuum advance work where it is. But put the vacuum advance on the ported tube, on the angle, and have the idle. You can change that with the springs and weights if you really need to. When adjusting the idle screw, it's important to note that the ignition timing has to be correct. The engine has to be fully warmed, and we have to have the target idle speed somewhere where we want it. This engine has a mechanical fan, so we don't have to worry about electrical fans adding electrical load. But if you do have electrical fans, it's better to have the fans turned off at the time of adjustment. Right now the idle speed is a little too high, so I'm backing down the screw. I'm trying to get the IAC steps to come off of zero. When I'm done adjusting the idle screw to get the IAC steps between zero and 10, all I have to do is turn off the key or turn off the idle set mode. That's all you need to do for idle adjustment. So with every install, I'll adjust the idle RPM based on the cam in the engine. This one's okay at 700 RPM, but I'm hearing it be a little unstable, so I'm gonna go up to 720 RPM. When I do the screw adjustments, I gotta make sure the idle set mode is set to on, that will force the TPS to zero, and then I can adjust the screw. You can see in the handheld, the RPM is at the target speed and that the steps are below 10 and above zero. They're actually three or four, which is perfect. This system does have an air conditioner hooked up, so I'm gonna enable the AC enable option that will kick up the idle RPM. 20 RPM, or maybe I want 40 RPM for this engine because it's a little bit of a cammed engine. This engine seemed to get a little bit lean when I hit the throttle, so I've adjusted the accelerator pump settings up a little bit to give it more fuel when I snap on the throttle. The DTPS Excel Max will multiply the fast Excel fuel when I hit the throttle quickly. This will help avoid any flat spots if I really smash the throttle hard. The tip out adjustment is going to reduce the fuel injection when I'm lifting the throttle. This will help avoid extra rich conditions and popping in the exhaust. For the initial setup, this engine is a 355 cubic inch engine. It's got a mild cam, and the engine builder says it can handle 6200 RPM, no problem. With the initial setting set to cam two, I can see that the AFR Learn is pulling out a lot of fuel. I'm gonna switch it up to cam three and see how it does. It's gonna stumble a little bit right when I switch it over because it's changing to a different volumetric efficiency table, but that's gonna go away really quickly. You can see the fuel is correcting itself again. It's adding a little bit more fuel. It's gonna unlearn some of that. I'm okay with it being minus 20 something percent at idle. It's the higher loads that's gonna be more critical for the cam selection. This cam and engine has about a 50 kPa idle. I can kind of judge a cam one as having a below 40 kpi idle, cam two could be in the 40s, cam three in the 50s, cam four about 60 to 80 kpa at idle. Anything above 80 and you're going to want to have a custom tune done. 
When inspecting the fuel pressure, it's important to disconnect the vacuum reference to the pressure regulator. The pressure should remain constant during this check. If the pressure is low, you may have a clogged filter. If the pressure is high, you may have a blocked return. I also like to check the fuel pressure when I rev the engine up. If the pressure drops when I rev the engine, that means the fuel filter may be getting clogged. It can get clogged even on a new install due to debris being in the tank or even debris in the fuel. Sometimes the filters clog quickly after a new install due to dust and debris in the fuel tank and the 10 micron filter doing its job of catching the fuel. If your engine starts operating differently over time, you may want to make sure your fuel pressure is still staying steady or just clean the filter regularly as a precaution. You can see the fuel pressure stays steady when I rev it. I'm gonna reconnect the pressure regulator. If I rev the engine with the pressure regulator vacuum reference, the pressure will change when I have vacuum, such as when I decelerate after revving the engine. This is normal. You also have to make sure there's no fuel leakage anywhere from either the fittings or from the throttle body itself. It's also a good idea to make sure all the injectors are working. You can kind of see if they're spraying or you can actually stick a finger down and see if they get wet. You should feel each one pulse little bits at a time at idle. Another inspection I like to make is to make sure there's no wires sitting on the exhaust, no wires touching any ignition wires, and no wires having any chance of getting damaged by any accessory. All right, so after the install, we got it running. I set the ignition timing. I've adjusted the idle screw for the IAC steps to be below 10. I've got the fuel pressure checked, it's good. Our pressure regulator is already preset out of the factory, so I just have to make sure the fuel filter is not clogged or anything like that. I've got it started, I've got the idle AFR set, I've got the cam select set so that it's not learning very far away. I'm gonna go on the dyno now. It's gonna act just like a road. You can do it with a friend if you have a friend, but uh, I don't have friends, so I'm gonna do it on the dyno by myself. 